So I've always kind of wondered what is the best fishing knot? What is the strongest fishing knot? As anglers, a lot of us know that the knot is the weakest part of your line. A lot of times when a fish breaks you off, it actually breaks at the knot. So what is the best fishing knot? And not only that, what is the worst fishing knot? In this video, I'm gonna be testing out seven popular fishing knots. I'm gonna be using my push-pull force gauge to tell me exactly what knot is the strongest and what knot is the weakest. Now, in order to get accurate results from this test, I am going to tie each fishing knot to this small jig head five different times. Then with my push-pull force gauge, I'm gonna crank that baby until the line breaks and the gauge will let me know exactly at what pound test this broke. After conducting the five different tests, I will simply take the average of those tests and that will be the result for that knot. Now, the fishing line that I will be using is Yozuri T7 fluorocarbon line. This is 20 pound test, but after doing my line test last year, I found out that this consistently broke at 22 pounds. So just keep that in mind as we run the tests. On one end of the fishing line, I will tie my knot to my jig head. On the other end, I will use these aluminum crimps to make sure that that side has 100% knot strength. Now let's get this test started with one of the first fishing knots I ever learned, which is the improved clinch knot. All right, so we just got done with the improved clinch knot. And this one was a little bit all over the place. The highest breaking strength it broke at was 18.8 pounds. The lowest was 16.1 pounds. It averaged over the five tests 17.32 pounds. So again, although this is 20 pound fluorocarbon line I'm testing on, I know that this particular line, which is the Yozuri T7, will break at 22 pounds. So you're losing about 22% of your overall strength by tying that improved clinch knot. Now moving right along, let's get into the uni knot. I used to tie a double uni a lot, tying two lines together, but I never really ever fished this particular knot. I'm doing four wraps with this 20 pound fluorocarbon, just so you guys know. There we go. This is a single, line knot. The line only goes through the eye of the hook or the bait that you're using once. So that's always important to know because I'd imagine that the double ones are going to be a little bit better, but I may be wrong. Here we go. First test of the double or just the single union knot. Just the union knot. Oh, wow. That was actually quite a bit better. 19.1 on the first try. That actually beats all of the improved clinch ones. Interesting. Ugh. All right, so I just wrapped up the uni knot test and this definitely is a better knot than the improved clinch knot. So if you've ever debated that with a friend, you can now tell him he stinks. But anyways, this on average broke at 18.3 pounds, which actually is a full pound more than the improved clinch knot. So this, this knot is technically 5% better. Um, it's an 83% knot. You lose about 17% of your breaking strength. Now, a big question I know that a lot of you guys have is, Tyler, where did you get that awesome shirt and hat? And you know what? You can find it down below on my apparel company, Fin Fishing. This is a USA made sun shirt. It's pretty much one of a kind and they're awesome. I have several different ones. So if you guys want to help support the channel, help me bring more videos like this to you, click on that link down below. I'm actually running a sale right now. If you buy one of these shirts, you can get the next one for 50% off. So basically two shirts for around 80 bucks. 
its deal. Now, if you've ever bought any trialing fishing line before, you've probably seen the next knot on the back of the box, which is the trialing knot. Yeah. Oh, jeez. The trialing knot scored at worst 16.9 pounds and at best right at 19 pounds, giving it an average of 17.62 pounds, making it the second best knot so far just behind the uni knot. All right, now I'm going to tie the snell knot. And I actually don't ever normally tie snells with fluorocarbon. Um, usually for me, it's a braid. It's braid with a heavy weight. If I'm punching mats, that's when I tie a snell knot with braided line. But I do know several anglers who tie a snell knot with fluorocarbon. Literally anytime they're flipping and pitching uh, a Texas rig, they tie that snell knot. So I'm gonna do the snell knot, um, even though I don't do it. And hey, maybe we'll find out it's stronger or maybe we'll find out it's not. Now, obviously I can't tie a snell knot on this jig head, so I'm going to have to tie it on a bare hook. Now, one of the most interesting things I found about this test is that the snell knot is one of the most consistent knots that we tie. Most of the knots that I have tied so far have a variance of over two pounds between them. However, at worst, the snell knot came in at 19.1 pounds and at best 19.6 pounds. This gave it an average breaking strength of 19.3 pounds, which is a full pound heavier than the best knot we have tied so far, the uni knot. And when tying this knot with fluorocarbon, you only lose about 12.27% of your total breaking strength. Now, the only bad thing about a snell knot is you can really only tie this on hooks and not every lure that you use, you're going to be able to tie this knot. All right, now it is time for the Palomar knot. This is definitely probably a fan favorite. This is one of the knots that growing up, I was told is the strongest knot out there on the market. So I'm very anxious to see how this does in comparison to the other knots and to see if it is the strongest knot. First test with the Palomar. Can you all see that? Oh, ooh. 17.1, that's not great. Now, if there's one thing I know about a Palomar knot is that my boy Tyler Anderson from Tyler's Real Fishing loves to tie to it. Find that loop, wrap it around the bottom of the hook, make sure I don't have any tags sticking out. Go like this. <laughs> I'm sorry, I had to. Overall, the Palomar is actually a pretty good knot. At lowest, it scored 17.1 pounds, and at best, it was 19.8 pounds. Overall, the average breaking strength was 18.9 pounds, which means you lose out on about 14% of your overall line strength by tying this knot. Something that's extremely important to do is whenever you're tying knots, whatever type of knot it is, Make sure you understand exactly how to tie it correctly because with every single knot that I have done, I have had outliers is what I'm calling them because I'm not going to even count them towards the test because they are times with every single knot. I just did one with the Palomar knot, for example. It broke out 11 pound test, 11. All the other tests that I've done have been between 17 and almost nine, on, and over 19 pound, but one broke out 11. And the reason was because that knot, I could tell when I pulled it together, like it, it clicked, it like made a weird clicking noise and I just like didn't like the look of it. Like it didn't look good to me, but I was like, I'll just test it anyways. Put it on there, fired it up, 11 pound test that broke. I had another, I had several others, literally every single knot I've tied so far, I've had at least one where it was substantially worse. So make sure that when you go to tie knots, you know exactly how to tie them because it costs you huge percentages. Like I know that this is 22 pound breaking strength and this just broke out 11, that's literally half. So that's scary to really think about. Make sure you know how to tie your knots. Uh, apparently I do not. All right, next up is the double pitson. This is actually my favorite knot. It's the one that I use with all my fluorocarbon. I believe that it is stronger than the Palomar knot, but we're about to find that out, so. B, better than the Palomar. Ah, 
Well, I told everybody in a YouTube video that I really believed that the double Pitson was better than the Palomar knot. And turns out, according to my tests and the way that I tied them, they're literally the exact same. Now the last knot is going to be the double San Diego jam. Last year when I had made a video about the double Pinson, there was a few comments that said you need to try the double San Diego jam. And I haven't tried it until today. So let's go ahead and test out this last knot. Now my only question about this knot is did it, did it originate in San Diego? I know San Diego is big bass fishing town. Double San Diego jam. Seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Ooh, wow. Look at that. First double San Diego jam. That is the first, see if that zooms in right. That is the first, that's actually the first knot that I've tied that I've actually even hit 20 pound line, or 20 pound breaking strength. Well, it's official. I have been tying the wrong knot. The double San Diego jam knot was by far the best one on this test with the 20 pound fluorocarbon line that I was testing, scoring an average of 19.4 pounds, which means you only lost 11% of your total breaking strength. Now, if you were to take that number and apply it to the package of 20 pound line, that means you're only losing 3%. Now, if you guys enjoyed this style of video and you wanna see me test out the best fluorocarbons on the market, I'm gonna leave a video that I did right here. Thanks so much for watching guys, and I will see you in the next one.